My name is Gnome Code, and I know how to make everything because I am the best scripter that ever lived. This is going to be a massive waste of my time, but I'm going to try and teach you noobs how to make stuff. Got it, stupid? Okay, if you can forgive that terrible intro for a moment, let's try and explain what this video is actually about. And it might be a little bit of a truth bomb for some of you. So it's been almost two years since the first ever tutorial video on this channel. And over that time, I've made a variety of videos on making a variety of things. Now, some of these have actually been quite popular and have even inspired you to start making creations of your own and even set about learning scripting, which is awesome. Now, unsurprisingly, this is asked people to ask me, how do they go about making X or Y and what's the script for this or that? But here's the thing. I don't actually know how to make any of these things. So what am I on about? Well, in this video, I want to explain how I've gone about making things. And while I might not be able to teach you the exact way to make X, I want to explain to you how you can go about making anything. Now, when many people think of scripting or coding, as it's often known, they imagine some kind of cryptic language of archaic symbols that they're gonna have to all learn and memorize. While this is partly true as they are programming languages, after all, it's not really the full picture. Because I have good news for you. First off, you certainly don't need to remember everything. And secondly, if you already speak English, then you have a major advantage as pretty much every programming language in existence is already written in English. Essentially, programming is just a way of writing instructions for the computer, with each script potentially containing thousands of individual little instructions to make up that script. To start off, I want you to imagine a certain popular brand of plastic building bricks. No, not that one, popular. Now a single brick on its own isn't very exciting. But if we want to build something, then we just need to use those studs at the top to connect it to another similar brick. Now, of course, not every building brick is the same, and there are all kinds of different shaped pieces in different sets. Programming is exactly the same. But it's this basic level of understanding that we then use when we want to go and build something more complex, like a police station, Death Star, or Taj Mahal, or whatever it might be. And of course, the exact same thing applies when you're trying to create a massive thing like Bloxburg or Phantom Forces. So with this in mind, let's take a look at some of the pieces we'll need to understand how to use to start making things. Now, I think most of my subscribers are a pretty smart bunch. And if they want to know something, they'll probably try and find and learn that thing. This usually involves jumping straight to YouTube and finding a suitable tutorial. Now, to be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. We all do it, and it's a great way to pick up any missing pieces you might need. But I've seen too many people trying to jump head first straight into tutorials to make quite complex things. Yes, you may be able to create stuff if you can follow it to the letter, but more likely you might get confused and get easily tripped up by stuff you won't be able to see where you've gone wrong. It's almost like trying to learn a skateboard before you can walk. It's probably not going to end up well. Now this isn't a tutorial video, so I'll be somewhat skimming over here, but you can find out more about all of these online and in other videos, and I'll probably end up covering them myself at some point in the future anyway. But let's take a look at what I consider the four key concepts. Number one, directory paths. What I mean by this is how you access things in the game via a script. If there's a part in the game that you want to change the color of, we need to tell the computer which part we need to change. You can kind of imagine this as trying to describe to an alien where you lived. You have to start out by telling them your planet, followed by your country, area, street, and then your house. So in Roblox, if we want to make a part turn green, we'd first have to go to the workspace, then the model, then reference the part, and finally the color property of that part. You can also use this the other way. So if you're in a script, you can reference the parent of that script, which means one stage up, which could be the model, and the parent of the model would be the workspace. Number two, conditional statements. This is a way of checking if something is true, and if it is, then doing that thing. So, if you're making a simulator script for a car, you might want to check the amount of fuel that the vehicle has before allowing it to move. Number three, loops. Roblox has two main types of loops called while and for loops. Using loops are a really important concept as it allows for you to repeat the same instruction without you having to repeat yourself multiple times by writing the thing again and again and again. For example, if you wanted to make a flashing light, it'd be ridiculous to write thousands of lines just writing on and then off, on and then off. Instead, you could just add them both into a loop and the computer will reiterate through those lines instead. Number four, 
functions. This allows us to compartmentalize our code into different sections. We can then run these at a time of our choosing rather than everything being run just when the game starts. For example, you might want to have some code that only runs when a player presses a certain key or steps on a part. Functions also allow you to send and receive data back and forth. For example, you could have a function that adds two numbers together and then gives you that result. Functions are a really powerful feature of scripting, and as you learn more, you'll find yourself combining them together for even greater results. If all of these things are a breeze to you, then you're well on your way to start making things. If, on the other hand, some of these are a bit unfamiliar to you, then not to worry, you have plenty of time to learn them. The best thing about learning all of these things is that none of this knowledge is unique to Roblox or scripting in of itself. These are concepts that are universal to all programming, so whether it's an online shopping basket or software to send a rocket to the moon, they're all programmed in a very similar way. Okay, so once you have some basic scripting concepts, you're probably now ready to go and create things. You probably have plenty of ideas for things you'd like to make, but it can be a bit difficult making the transition from those basic concepts to then starting to apply them to something physical. The important thing here is trying to break it down into steps. So to choose an easy example, let's say I want to make lava. Now this might sound pretty straightforward for some of you, uh, but bear in mind this could be anything you want to create. It could be a laser turret, a spaceship, or a dog, or whatever. The important thing is you have an idea. So want to make a lava block. Now this might sound like a straightforward description, but in reality it's only a description and a very basic one at that. If we want to script that behavior, we're going to need to outline how that'll work in a bit more detail. We could start out by breaking it down like this. First, we'll need to have a part. Then we'll need to check whether the player has touched that part. Finally, we'll want to kill or maybe just reduce the health of the player when they've touched that part. So this starts to flesh out the initial idea but it doesn't get us much further. If we want to actually take this concept and create a working script, we're going to need some basic knowledge of how Roblox works and the kind of things we can use. Thankfully, there's something to help us with that. This is where the Roblox wiki comes in. If I ever want to know how something works, I'll usually do a quick web search and the Roblox wiki will usually be in the first few results. Or I can just go directly to developer.roblox.com and be taken straight there. They have a great combination of articles and tutorials along with a section called the API reference. This is essentially like the manual for everything scripting on Roblox. Everything in the game, all of this stuff, all the objects, classes, functions, it's all part of the Roblox API and it's all listed here on the Roblox wiki. So how do you use this site? It can be a bit confusing and may just look like a boring and uninteresting list of information, but trust me when I say this is the key. So with this in mind, let's try and work out how to make our lava block again. We can start out by searching for a part and visiting its page. There's a description with a bunch of basic information, which is then followed by a list of its properties, many of which we might recognize from building, from the properties window when we click on a part. Below this, there's a list of functions. These are essentially pre-made bits of code from Roblox that we can then use to make something happen without us having to worry about the exact details. For example, we could call the destroy function on a part and that will cause it to disappear, easy. Next on the list are events and these allow us to run our own function when something specific happens. We can see that parts have two main events, one of which is called touched and the little description says fired when a part comes in contact with another part. Now that sounds perfect for what we want to achieve. So if we click on the purple text here, we'll get taken to another page, which then tells us all about how this event works. And we can even see some code samples down here of different scenarios using this event. So if we're not sure exactly how it works, we can read through the samples and then copy them into Studio to play about with. Now that we've formulated a plan and looked at some of the information we'll need, all that's left to do is to start bringing everything together. I happen to already know that in order to damage the player, I need to access the health property of the humanoid of the player's character. So by combining that with what we've already talked about, I can now start to create my lava block. Way! And the more things I learn, the more complicated I can start to make it. Perhaps even adding fire to the player or an effect to your screen. And of course, you can do this for anything else you want. So if I was wanting to make that pet dog, It'll be the same steps, just a longer process, and you can start to put the pieces together all the same. You get the idea. So there you have it. Hopefully that helps with some of your future creations. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.